Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And you join me here in Auckland, New Zealand for day, not 100, 206. Jeez, I've got to get used to saying 200 now. 206 of 365 days of Bible reading. It is great to have you with me, no matter where you are around the world. Thank you for joining me here for another day. Looking forward to getting into this and seeing what God is going to say. Let's have a look at our scriptures for today. They're in the descriptions on every platform. Psalm 89, verse 9 to 13. Romans chapter 9, verse 1 to 21. And Hosea chapter 11, verse 12 to chapter 14, verse 9. So make sure you get into those at any point. You can pause this now and read those, or you can read it at the end. Maybe this is just going to help give you some more context as to what you're reading. No matter how you do it, it doesn't matter. Make sure you read the Bible because that's the most important part of our devotion. The second most important part is the coffee. Let's talk brews. And uh, today we have a new bean, and I'm excited about this. It is the Common Good Coffee Milk, M-Y-L-K, designed for plant-based milks, of which I do not use. So, look. It's going to be interesting. If I was a plant-based person, this would be what I would try. However, I am happy to announce to you today that I have this in a Chemex, which has nothing to do with plant-based milks either. But the tasting notes are what interest me here. And I'll tell you a little bit about Common Good Coffee. The flavor notes are Amarina Cherry and Crisp Nectarine. So I'm expecting to get that out of the Chemex today. I'm looking forward to giving this a try. Now, Common Good Coffee, their whole thing is about doing things three times as good as regular coffee. In fact, they want you to drink gooder, feel gooder, and do gooder. And all of that is about being uh, ethical, an ethical coffee roaster, uh, and supporting uh, people across the world making those coffees and doing it in a way that is organic and ethically traded to make sure that everybody is paid fairly and that profits get distributed the right way. So that's their whole premise. That's their whole framework. I'm looking forward to giving this coffee a try today. Like I said, it is in the Chemex. Let's give it a go. Let's see if we can get that cherry and nectarine flavor. Cheers. Okay. It's not got a strong flavor at all. It's The aftertaste is... It is florally and a little bit stone fruity at the end, but it's not the powerful fruit, stone fruit flavor that I thought I was going to get as a Chemex. Now, this might not be designed for Chemex. It might be that you actually need the lower end of the coffee to come through and give it some flavor. So we'll give that a try in the next couple of days. But I'm going to be honest, as a Chemex, the way that I've made it today, and again, I could be, it could just be me. I could be super average at making the coffee. But I'm going to be honest and say I there's not much flavor to this at all as a Chemex. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a six. Still good uh, and easy to drink coffee, but I was definitely expecting some more flavor in there with the stone fruit. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to give this a six out of ten. But again, I, there's other people that have tried this and raved about it. So it could just be me. I'm super open to that. That is the coffee, though. That is the bruise for today. Let's get into the Bible. This, this well, the actual reason that we're here kind of loops back to the first reason that we're here. I feel bad about saying the second reason that we're here is coffee. The last reason that we're here is coffee. The word of God is the real. Anyway, let's get into it for today. I don't know about you, but I think one of the hardest things about being a Christian is living with the reality that we are never going to know all the answers to the questions that we have in this life. We know that God is in control of the universe and that the world that we live in belongs to him. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. We know that he loves us and is for us and that everything belongs to him. But yet we are, <laughs> we, we are never going to know all the answers while we're here. That, that's a hard one to wrestle with. In verse 11 of our psalm today, the psalmist writes about how the heavens are God's and so is the earth, that God founded all of it. We continue to read about how he didn't just establish everything, but he continues to lead, rule, and reign over it. The truth is, is that you and I, we've been given free will to make decisions, but God remains the ruler of the universe. The challenge we have as Christians today is knowing that while we have the free will to do as we please, we must seek his will and ensure that our actions line up with his heart and his will for our lives. When we do, we see that God works all things together for the good of those who love him. We read about this only a few days ago. 
Fairness is an interesting concept. The world that we live in is not a fair one. Children have mastered the art of, it's not fair. But so have many adults who are considering the Christian faith. When Paul talks about being a Christian, he doesn't pip Judaism against Christianity. In fact, he views it as becoming part of the fulfillment of the true Israelites and the true children of Abraham. For Paul, he makes this an intensely personal thing. Look at the language he uses about the Jews in chapter 9, verse 3. He uses the phrase, my people. Remember, this isn't about Christians. It's about the Jewish people. That's who he's calling my people. Uh, There's a thought process that says there's no more sorrow in life after you find Christ. For Paul, this is not the case. With great joy comes great sorrow, sorrow for Paul. It's interesting, isn't it? An interesting paradox that we see in the Christian faith. You might feel this way too about your faith about your family, your friends who haven't come to know Christ yet, or maybe when they reject Jesus. There's this joy about being a Christian, but then there's also this deep sorrow that we feel at the same time. I don't know if you clocked it, but Paul and Moses display the same heart for the people. Paul, like Moses, prays a similar prayer to Moses, who prays a prayer similar to Paul, but Moses' prayer is in Exodus chapter 32, verse 32. And it's all about forgiving the sins of the people. And if God didn't, that he should blot Moses out in place of the people. Paul play, prays a really similar prayer. But God doesn't accept either, either of these men's prayers because our human sacrifice isn't enough to atone for the sins of his people. Only Jesus' sacrifice could do that. Jesus was also willing to be cursed and cut off a fact that we're going to read about in Romans later. Jesus did that for us. We don't need to for others. We see Paul begin to question the fairness of God. But it's important to remember that God is in control. He gives us free will. And because of this free will, people miss out on the fullness of life that God has for them because he allows people to choose whether or not they want to follow Christ and receive the fullness of life or not. It's our responsibility. At the end of the day, it's our responsibility and it's the grace of God towards us that empowers us and enables us to choose. That might seem unfair, but in giving all people free will, that is the greatest display of fairness God could give us. The result of our free will is up to us. So what will we choose? Jesus or no Jesus? The decision is ours. Finally today, we see a call from God to turn from our sin and return it to his love. That's in chapter 12, verse 6. This is the main verse of the book of Hosea. In fact, it sums up the whole book. It says this, it's coming up on screen. But you must return to your God, maintain love and justice and wait for your God always. This this is the call of God to his people from the beginning. The God that we serve is a God of love, mercy, justice, and grace. And the call for us is to return to God, to maintain love and justice, and to wait on God always. This is the call for our lives. In any and every area of our lives that we've run away from God, we must return. Even more so, we must return back to the love of God. The choice, like Paul articulates in Romans, is ours. We must return, but when we do, we find life. Verse of the day. Verse of the day today, Hosea chapter 12, verse 5 says, The Lord God Almighty, the Lord is His name. The name Lord carries weight. Lord means a master, a person possessing supreme power and authority, a ruler. Is this who God is to you? He needs to be. Every time I reflect on what Lord means, I'm convicted. I need to bring my life back under his lordship on a daily basis. Be my Lord God, be my savior. That is it for the Daily Brew today, day 206, done and dusted. Thank you so much for joining me no matter where you are around the world. It is a blessing, a privilege, and a treat to have you in the depths of this Bible reading plan and this Bible reading journey. I pray it's blessing you as much as it is with me and that you go in deeper in your relationship with God. Hey, no matter where you are around the world, thank you so much for everybody who's followed us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and for rating the podcast and for you on YouTube. Thank you for subscribing and clicking the bell so that you never miss a devotional upload. As I always say, this is a free devotional plan. We make no money off this devotional plan. So feel free to share this and get the word out so that more and more people can engage in God's word. That is it though for today. Uh, Coming up, in fact, 
I'm going to pre-record tomorrow's one because we're about to jump on a plane today and fly to London. We're going to be in London for the next few days. Then we're going to shoot up to Scotland. I'm preaching at a conference in London, and then I'm going to be preaching in Scotland. Have a couple of days with some family there as well. So tomorrow's one will be pre-recorded. But don't worry, we'll be live in London. Wow, live-ish at the time of recording in London for a couple of weeks. I'm really looking forward to being there, looking forward to being with all of my family, and looking forward to being with some new friends as well as I preach the gospel. That is it though for today. Come back tomorrow. We're going to still be here recording. I'll be in space. I'll be in the sky. Not space. I'll be in the sky. Anyway, you, you don't need to know that. Just come back tomorrow for another brew and another go of the Daily Brew. I don't know what I'm saying. Close it, Harry. Close it. Bring it to a close. If it's the start of your day, have a great rest of your day. Unless it's sleep time, good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another day of the Daily Brew.